Each step gets us closer to where we're going. What we don't always know, though, is how many steps it will take to reach that goal. Is there an end to this? How much longer will it take? We live our lives more than ever now with uncertainty. Enjoying the moment without dwelling in the past or having expectations on the future seems like the only way we'll make it through whatever this is and however long it will take. I'm John Sabot, and these are my Far East travels. I'm exploring Nha Chang, Vietnam after lockdown restrictions were loosened. This is my first visit to the Cham temples at Ponagur Tower, one of the top sites to visit in Nha Chang. I was excited to see this exquisite example of architecture of the Cham people for the first time since my last visit five years ago. These remarkable temples were constructed between the 8th and 12th centuries. The temples are dedicated to Po Neger, the goddess that ruled over the southern kingdom of the Cham. There were seven or eight towers here at one time, but today only four remain. They were all originally dedicated to Hindu gods. The Cham people throughout the centuries eventually converted from Hinduism to Islam. The few Cham that remained here still pray at these temples, along with Vietnamese and Chinese Buddhists and Hindu worshippers. Po Neger is located three kilometers north of the city center on a granite knoll on the northern bank of the Kai River. You'll find expansive views of the city along with marine activity. Although the fishing industry remains an important part of the economy, above all, Nha Chang is one of the most important tourist hubs of Vietnam. Sadly, the lack of visitors at this site is evidence of a devastated tourism sector. Although at the time of filming this video, Vietnam was still closed to international travelers, other than two or three people visiting sporadically throughout my short time here, there is really no way of knowing how important or significant this place is if you were judging it on attendance alone. The Cham people suffered defeat by the Viets in the late 15th century and were reduced to a small enclave here in Nha Chang. By the 19th century, the Vietnamese Emperor Minh Mang had dissolved what was left of the Cham Kingdom and many of the Cham fled to Cambodia. With its intricate Hindu carvings and statues, visiting Po Nagar had a slight satiating effect on my thirst for travel. The legacy of the Cham exists in a few other spots around Vietnam and they should not be missed. The iconic image of Po Nagar has been recently featured in the Vietnam Tourism Board's Live Fully in Vietnam campaign. Selfishly, I've always dreamed of visiting sites like Po Nagar, Angkor Wat or Hoi An without the throngs of tourists. After the pain I felt seeing empty seating areas where happy people were once served by locals to lone hawkers desperately trying to sell postcards to the odd visitor like myself so they could put food on the table made my heart sink. A few camera shots of temples not inundated with selfie seekers is just not worth knowing that another ghost tourist site has been haunted by lives ravaged by the pandemic. I just wanted to walk and rid myself of the effects of being in a confined space for so many weeks. There's no lack of places to walk and feel free again here. I just wanted to enjoy this river and all its beauty, all its flaws. This bridge and its beautiful frame of the islands and ocean beyond. Gotta get to the beach that sat empty for weeks. This beach that sat empty for weeks, now filled with smiling faces and hopes. This beach and people where they should be and the transition from light to dark. It's beyond beautiful. Hey John, yeah, Steve, uh, fan of your work. Cambodia has opened up, so I am here, and basically I'm just enjoying 
bit here and uh, using this kind of as a staging point to uh, for when Vietnam opens up. So uh, Vietnam is my love, but this is about as close as I can get to that for right now. It beats just hanging around in the U.S. waiting for things to change or open up. So uh, look forward to meeting you one day. Yeah, keep up the good content. There is hope in the air and in the region. The happiness I'm hearing from followers and friends arriving in Southeast Asia takes me back to the pre-pandemic days when all we needed to care about was what we would do for dinner and where we'd hang out for drinks. I'm feeling we'll get back to those times, but we'll still need a few months before travel throughout the region transitions into a new phase or form of somehow seamless queues through airports and at border crossings. In Vietnam, the first phase of openings of organized tours are underway. The planes are getting the go-ahead to start flying again on international routes, and there's a glimmer of hope that tourism will be back to life sometime in the new year. I'm grateful for what's happening now and where I am back at one of my favorite places to visit in Nha Trang, the Long Song Pagoda. Not that long ago, being here only seemed like it would just stay a memory. This pagoda has a storied past of surviving a typhoon, destructions from war, and subsequent moves. It survived through everything, and it's perhaps a reflection of how this country has also overcome so many obstacles, including the current one. It's the perfect place to escape the uncertainty of life that fills the air in every corner of the world at the moment. For myself, it not only takes me back to what's most important, mindfulness and gratitude, but this place also gives me hope that we have the capacity to make peace from effortless dialogue and have empathy and compassion for others. If we choose in the case of a world crisis to address the global concerns ahead of individual countries, then we may get to our goal sooner than if we don't. we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Buddha.
Well, that's it. I've got my second dose now of COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, a little bit uh, a sketchy morning. Went to the first location I was supposed to go to. They were closed. Went to a location nearby, a vaccine center uh, nearby. They didn't have my vaccine for the second dose. So then they found another place that had the right vaccine for me. So I ended up here and I'm done and I feel pretty good. And I suppose I'm ready to function as normally as we can right now here in Vietnam. And I uh, just want to say to uh, Vietnam, the people, the uh, government, thank you so much for taking care of us foreigners here and making sure that we're uh, all vaccinated. Probably one of the things that I missed the most during the extended lockdown was visiting the local markets that for me have become almost a daily ritual of life in Asia over the past nine years. It would have been a major disruption to a lot of locals too who prefer shopping at these markets where there's more variety of fruit and produce. Along with sellers that have nurtured relationships with their customers for decades, it's a shopping experience that supermarkets just can't compete with on those terms. The late TV host, author, and chef Anthony Bourdain once said about local markets, you see what's for sale, you see what's in season, you see the fundamental color palette of a cuisine, you really get a sense of what a culture loves most dear. It's the variety that's mind-blowing, four or five kinds of bananas, several sizes and shapes and colors of mangoes, stacks of greens, and ingredients that eventually are chopped, pounded, and made into mouth-watering sauces. Most of the time I can find a few wonderful vegetarian restaurants close by like this one that offer dozens of choices of dishes that make up a kom chai or vegetarian rice meal for not much more than a dollar. There's thousands of restaurants and food carts like this scattered everywhere in Vietnam. It's effortless to be a vegetarian, vegan, or choose more plant-based meals all over this country. This dog's instincts are spot on heading directly for the dining hall. Okay, you just gotta trust me. This looks a little odd, but crouch down here in this corner of the market is probably the safest place for me to do this right now. If you've been watching me or this channel for a while, you know I love exploring these local markets here in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. I have a real passion for it. I love the local engagement and seeing all the variety of fruits and vegetables local delicacies and street foods, stuff like that. But I do shop at supermarkets as well. They are convenient and there's a lot of things I can get there that I can't necessarily get at a local market. But the problem is if you shop exclusively at supermarkets, you're gonna miss out on a lot of really interesting things and fruits and products that just aren't commercially viable to stock in a supermarket chain. Maybe like this uh, milk fruit here, that uh, grows in lots of tropical countries and you'll see it all throughout Southeast Asia. It's called a milk fruit. Uh, the direct translation from Vietnamese uh, is breast milk, but for this video I think we'll just call it milk fruit. It's also called a star apple. Uh, really d delicious and refreshing. How you eat it is you cut it in half, so this is the top, this is the bottom, just cut it at the equator and just scoop out the white pulp. You don't eat the seeds and you don't eat the rind or that sort of uh, purplish kind of flesh as well. It's got kind of a latex component to it. It's not very good or appetizing, but uh, really refreshing. I would say that uh, you could uh, mix it in a smoothie maybe with some coconut water or coconut milk. That would be good, especially on a hot, humid day. 
some people make ice cream out of it or sorbets that would be good i would also make a really cool bar drink with this as well this would be really exotic and uh very different of course milk fruit found everywhere in southeast asia Cafes are open again in most Vietnamese cities. You'll have to show either a green QR code, which means you're fully vaccinated, or have had a negative COVID test within the last 72 hours. Speaking of podcasts, I have been hosting the Far East Travels podcast in its sixth year now. Travel news, information, updates, and hopefully inspiration from one of the most exciting places on the planet, Asia. Check out the Far East Travels podcast in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from. Hey, what an amazing afternoon here in Nha Chang. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, please. More videos on the channel from Vietnam, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. So do subscribe to the channel. If you feel like supporting the channel, that would be really cool. Thank you so much. Two links in the video description. Check those out. Again, thanks so much in advance for your support. Anything, everything is greatly appreciated. Hey, you know what? Despite what's going on right now, feeling pretty good. Feeling positive, things are gonna get better in the new year, and we are gonna be all traveling again soon. So, in the future, as always, I wish you safe travels, namaste, tashi delay, and peace from Vietnam. <laughs>